It is my pleasure now to introduce Professor Dr. Harald Schmidt. Professor Harald Schmidt is a former member, 2005 to 2009, and a Ross Abbott Abbey awardee of our club, and is currently visiting Melbourne with his wife, Betty, and his son, Tim, as part of a sentimental journey. He is a German doctor and pharmacist and heads of the Department of uh, Pharmacology at Monash University. Now he works in big data and clinical research at Maastricht University in Netherlands. And we look forward to his uh, commentary on the end of medicine as we know it. Dr. Schmidt, over to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I joined the club 20 years ago. I returned with my family 15 years ago, and now we are basically catching up with uh, some of the places, some of the friends, uh, and this club really made me feel home in Melbourne, and is still my favorite club. You have a fantastic club, the, the hands-on activities, the, the breadth of activities that you do, it's really amazing, so congratulations. Uh, again. But today, I would like to briefly show uh, what happened in the past 15 years, what we've been up to. And it's uh, really exciting. So it's not the end of medicine. It's only the end of medicine as we know it. And you might think, um, what's wrong with medicine? Um, we are looking actually in the moment uh, at the beginning of a so called Kondratiev wave. If you have studied economy or uh, maybe engineering, you have heard of that expression before. These were the major socioeconomic revolutions in our society. They usually last uh, 40 years. Uh, they begin with a huge crisis. They abolish concepts that we thought uh, will be there forever. Things appear that we would have thought are completely impossible. So for instance, the invention of the steam engine on the left enabled the industrial revolution. Since then, we had a couple of other Kondratiev wave, mainly based on another energy source. And I think we all agree that the most recent Kondratiev wave was the IT revolution. But we are at the end of the IT revolution. We have our Amazons, our Apples, our Microsoft, and so forth. And futurologists think the next big thing is actually a complete redefinition of psychosocial health. So how we define health, how we preserve it, and how we regenerate health. And all these waves start with a crisis. And you may say, what crisis? So for instance, um, you would be right if you say mortality has increased, decreased since 1900 dramatically. That's a huge achievement for medicine, and it is. But let's have a look. What was the contribution of preventing and treating infections? So hygiene, vaccination, and antibiotics. That's the red line. By the way, the peak is the Spanish flu. And now when we subtract the red line from the, 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 yeah, from the black one, that's what medicine has achieved in all other areas since 1900. And actually, since several years, the life expectancy in most Western countries is decreasing. So there are several reasons for that. The biggest problem we have in medicine is that we actually don't understand any disease, with the exception infectious diseases. What usually happens is that the patient, without a symptom, routine checkup, goes to a doctor, the doctor measures some symptoms, cholesterol high, blood pressure high, and so forth. Or he comes with a symptom, can't breathe very well, can't exercise very well. And then the disease is named after that symptom. High blood pressure, asthma, inflammatory bowel disease. These are all descriptions of symptoms. There is no understanding of what the cause is. And if you don't understand the cause of a problem, you can't repair it. So it becomes chronically defect. This is why we have so many chronic diseases. It's a capitulation of medicine 
that we can't cure diseases. There are many sort of scientific reasons for that, but the biggest error that we have done in medicine, me, myself as well, you know, I'm not the wise guy, but you know, um, you, we have to come to the conclusion that splitting up the human body, organ by organ, and having for every organ a clinic, a clinician, and a research discipline, like neurology, neurologist, and neuroscience, cardiology, cardiologist, and cardiovascular research, makes absolutely no sense. Think of rare diseases where we actually know the cause. A single gene is the cause for a rare disease. And those patients very often have symptoms in two, three, four, five organs. That's the simplest form of a disease. And it shows us already an organ-based approach makes no sense. Or even worse, naming a disease after a doctor, Alzheimer, Parkinson. What sort of disease definition is that? So to cut a long story short, for me personally, the eureka moment was when I saw this publication actually by a physicist. It's a network scientist. He did something that we with our brains would never be able to do. He did the network of all human diseases at once. In this network, the diseases are linked through shared risk genes. And you see that some diseases form little groups, colorful groups. And in these groups, that, that means diseases belong together, which we in the moment treat by different doctors. We do research, this, uh, research in different disciplines, but genetically, they belong together. And you can do these networks also with comorbidities. So if two diseases always occur in the same patient, maybe there are not two diseases. Maybe they are the same disease. So you, this big data. And um, to, to validate all of this, we extract now from these genes actually the disease mechanism. We, we, we turn, um, we basically what we do is we, we turn this network upside down. What we now call a disease is just a phenotype. And we want to define the causes of the disease from those genes that basically are glue between those phenotypes. And um, to show this as fast as possible, uh, we have done a second thing. You may have heard that uh, the discovery and the development of a new drug can take up to 16 years. And it costs between, some in a good year, 2.8 billion, in a bad year, 5.4 billion dollars to bring one drug successfully to the market, because this one drug has, of course, to counterpay all the unsuccessful attempts of that, uh, that company. And uh, what we do is we take drugs that are already on the market, where we know the side effects, and try to find new indications for them, which means we don't have to develop anything. The drug is already on the market. We go ideally directly to a phase two clinical trial. That's the proof of concept in patients. And we are in touch with regulators, at least in Europe, they say you don't need to do the phase three trial because they are not usually very representative anyway. And we hand it directly over to SME and industry. So what usually takes billions and takes up to uh, 16 years, we do within two years, half a million maybe. So to bring these innovations to the patient and with this precision, we think it will be possible in future to actually cure diseases. And if we have done that a couple of times and have biomarkers with uh, which we can monitor whether a disease risk is actually manifesting in a patient, we could even intervene earlier, even before the patient ever had the symptoms of his risk and uh, even prevent the disease. Thank you. Well, I must say that was absolutely fascinating. A whirlwind, but... Uh... If, yeah, looking at the health system in, in that way, um, I think it's one of the, the new positive mechanisms which maybe even AI can help. It does. In it does. Uh, doing things. Now, Dr. All right. Uh, so, Dr. Schmidt, wonderful to have you back at our club. Uh, we have a, a gift here for you. Uh, it's one of our legendary socks, rotary oh, wow. socks, limited edition. You can't get anywhere down the street. Um, please enjoy. Thank you. And it's 200%. Uh, be Australian because it's made locally by um, our past president, uh, Philip Endersby's company, Wilderness Wear. 
and we hope you enjoy it and look forward to seeing you and your family back again soon. Very much. I still have the yellow light craft from around okay. the bay. You know, very good. <laughs>